What's up guys, welcome back to another reaction. Before I get to this one, I just wanted to get a couple of things on my mind. First of all, you might notice that this video has a lot of dislikes uh, for no fucking reason, and I'm gonna explain that right now. A lot of people have been asking me on my DMs why that is happening, and I'm gonna explain it right now, I just said it. It's just been a lot of bitching on this channel, some douche who I fucking made a joke about, and apparently I was throwing shit at him. Uh, now I'm basically Mariah Carey and he's obsessing over me. Why you so obsessed with me? Basically, he wants me dead, you know? He's telling me to go kill myself, quit my channel, uh, saying a lot of fucking crazy shit. I'm not fucking sure. But this dude is literally one of the stupidest people I know on this earth, and I, I just don't know what to do about him anymore. He also has his little crew, which he claims uh, dislikes me as well, but I can assure you this guy has multiple accounts uh, disliking my video. You can tell by the comments in this video as well. He will comment, I can assure you that. Uh, you can tell by the comments uh, how fucking mature this guy is, and how mature his little 12 year old cocksuckers are too. And he also wants me to make a video on him, uh, dissing him back, which I'm not gonna do because honestly that's a waste of time. And I don't want to kill my viewers just talking about you on a one single video, so yeah. So anyways, I don't want to waste any more of my time on this worthless prick, or on his little cocksucking 12 year olds. They can go fuck themselves, I'm never quitting YouTube, uh, you can get the whole world to dislike my videos and talk shit about me. And I'm not quitting this because I have so much fun doing it, and I got more supporters than you think I do, so yeah, go fuck yourself. And anyways, this is the last time I'm mentioning your name because you're literally, as I said, a worthless prick who is wasting my time. You guys happy I addressed it? I hope you are. Anyways, enough of all that yada yada. We're here with more Tupac. As you guys like it, this is the Ed Gordon interview. You guys have been recommending this one a lot. I know, I know you guys have been recommending also this ain't living, uh, fucking other songs like Thugs Manson, the OG version. We're gonna get to those, but you guys have been suggesting this one since I did the last Tupac interview, the MTV 1996 interview. This is the Ed, the Ed Gordon interview. Uh, I'm not really sure uh, what year is it, but we're gonna check it out right now. It's 24 minutes long, so I like the MTV interview. This is gonna be a two-part series. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share with all your friends, and click that button to miss an upload. I love you all, and I hope God is with you. Now let's get to this fucking reaction. Tupac Shakur is a study of contradiction. The million-selling rapper is praised by many for his socially relevant raps. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, keep your head up. A salute to black women who aren't getting support from black men. Support the other women. Hand. Support black women. Do that, please. Don't be a fucking dick. And he's Come on, be socially correct for once. He's a budding young actor who has been praised by movie critics as someone with real acting talent. Yet with all this for going real. on, many say he's risking it all. You see... For real. If you guys saw Juice, Juice is one of my favorite movies of all time. If you did not know Juice, I fucking love that movie. Tupac literally looks like a fucking psycho from the hood. And I'm, I fucking love it, man. Shakur Best performance. is also a young man in trouble with the law. He faces numerous charges across the country. Among his legal... Assault? Sexual assault? Tupac Shakur. I know this is fucking saying that one person could be someone in front of you, but when he's not in front of you, he's somebody else. But we're talking about Tupac Shakur, somebody who was literally the most poetic guy in the world. Sexual assault. Come on, man. He served People just don't like the truth. Assaulting a movie director that fired him from a project. He's apologized for that one. He's been involved in a shooting incident with an off-duty police officer. And in October, he faces trial on charges of sodomy. I caught up with the popular rapper in his friend's bookstore in Atlanta. We started our conversation by talking about why he feels he can impact today's youth with his work. Ah. Yes. Drink your water, man. Drink your water. Tupac could definitely impact this youth, but I feel like this youth just doesn't listen anymore. They hear, they don't listen. That's why I choose to go for a much mature audience, and that's why I listen to this music in particular. One, because I enjoy it much more. I feel like I'm actually learning stuff from this music, and I'm not just hearing about money, sex, and drugs. Even though that's good too, to some degree, I just prefer this. And also, uh, I feel like today's youth is just so fucked up. And I just, I'm, I'm literally like embarrassed to be part of this generation, which is why I don't consider myself part of this generation. And I hope you old G's out there, you know, all the G's who watch my videos can accept me from your generation as well. Even though that'll never happen. Anyways, I'm doing this for you guys. I love reacting to this and I hope you enjoy watching it as well. All We're all G's in this channel. That hasn't been shown before. You know, I have a whole energy that represents not just black youth, but white youth, Mexican youth, youth. You know what I'm saying? That, that, um... Puerto Rican youth. 
You're still impacting today, Tupac. He'd be proud if he was alive today, wouldn't he? That change right before you go from being 18 and unresponsible to when you go to being like 21, 22, and the whole world's on your shoulders. Um, I, I believe strongly that um, my audience empathize with me because I show that side. I show that emotion, raw, uncut, good and bad. And so I think I can bring that um, more funnel, more um, directed into screenplays, more albums, producing, managing, you know what I'm saying? If I That's what I like mostly about music is that when you hear the music, you can relate to it in some way. It makes you feel a certain way. The, a, music, a song that has the power to do that, it's already one in my book. It's already one in my book, and that's why Tupac, to me, is the greatest rapper ever, along with Tortoise B.I.G. and Eminem. Uh, they might be crazy in some of their songs, but most of their songs, they really talk about shit that really troubled them, you know, personal stuff, and they really like... It's like you're talking to a best friend, and you can't help but relate to them in some degree. Can, um, it's just fucking amazing. Figure out just how to control it. I can, uh, I can use it on a lot of different levels. In fact, it is that raw, uncut energy that Shakur brings to entertaining that has won him a legion of fans. And that's what I want for this channel. I want everybody to relate to this channel, you know. Just sit back, relax, listen to some music. I just, that's what I want for this channel. Just a big family channel where I can relax with you guys and just listen to music. I I'm pausing to too much. Sorry, I haven't recorded in a long time. At the tender age of 23. 23. Damn. It's amazing. I'm, I'm almost more in awe of the people in awe of me than they are of me. You know what I'm saying? I trip off. Cause it happens out of nothing. It just goes, you know. Everybody just be screaming and happy, and I just, I, I get uncomfortable. And I, it's like, it's like um, similar to a deer being caught in the, in the headlights. I just freeze, you know. And I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should um, be what they want me to be, or if I should make them hate me so they can stop. You know, like say something mean so they can just stop. But I, I'm often I'm just like caught in the middle of it because it's, it's you can't. It's, I mean, no one can do that. Police can't do that. They can't stand in front of all those people and control them with a gun and mace and all that. So me with just words. It's like a, um, a battle to find the right words to say at the right time. The man is a fucking poet. The man should run for president. Fuck Kanye. I said this in the last interview. He, he knows how to say his words so well, man. He was so fluid with it. I'm, I'm curious, when you, when you think about the idea that you do have that kind of control over so many people. Uh, you know what the scary thing is? It took... It sometimes takes a big man, or like an inspirational man, or like a man you can relate to, like Tupac, uh, to gain that control. Nowadays, it's so easy to gain that control right now, and that that's just scary, and doesn't doesn't hold a bright future for us. Uh, in, in one just sense, my opinion. The whole idea of being a role model comes up in the imagery, and a lot of people who know you, and I talked to them beforehand, suggested that hey, you know, when you meet him, he's going to be something entirely different than you imagine, <laughs> and what the media is portraying what about that idea that, that you have the media is full of dirty tricks and if i had a if i had a conversation with tupac i would die 50 percent of my life complete because i want to do other shit and i'd also like to have a conversation with eminem i wonder how that would go could i make him smile i think i could have been portrayed and don't think that in the wrong I way mean, to be honest you like the portrayal of you just hard thug that's right, thug. That's right. Don't step on me. That's right. You're in trouble. That's right. Yet there's another side. What about that idea that you got to be able to figure out where you're going? Um, to me, it's like um, it is my sensitive side that um, that likes to blow up the hard side because if my if I can, if my image or my reputation can stop a confrontation before it happens, I'm I'm, I'm fine. You know what I'm saying? I know how it is day to day. It's a constant um, man ego check going on in this street, in this world. Mm. So part of that is just like, you know, that's my that's my, my resume. But as far as the media, they look at it as something different. They don't care about my resume. They don't care about me not getting in trouble. It's just another story, you know, and it's, it's a real story. They don't have to pay for it, and they're going to milk it for all it's worth. As far as people, they want me, when they first see me, to humble myself. They want me to be like this and da -da -da, just because they're scared of me. But I don't feel like that's my job to humble myself to show you that I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat unless you're a threat to me. You know what exactly. I'm saying? So people say, when you meet Pop, he's different than he is because when somebody one on one. Fuck me, that's scared. I thought, oh, fuck. Jimmy, you fucking. Oh, oh God. Stay there with Rick. Stay there, please. You're the one laying on him, for Christ's sake. 
I was about to say, uh, anyways, um, it's funny how things turn out. Uh, the streets have kind of become the media now, because, like, I forgot what I, how, I was, how, how I was going to say it, Jesus Christ. Um, you know, you can say just one single thing on the internet. You can, you know, just say something that you didn't mean, and people just don't give you a chance to change your mind on it. Like, right now, I can, I can say right now that I don't believe in God. I do, but one day I just say I don't believe in God. People are always going to see you as that guy who doesn't believe in God. Even though you've changed your mind, you've gone to, like, church and you've put this knowledge in your head, people are just always going to see you the same. I don't know if you guys can follow me on that or if you have the same opinions. Let me know so down in the comments below. But, um, yeah, I think, I, I think it's really weird how just 20 years, not even 20 years, like 10 years, uh, just everything has changed and it's just flipped over on its head and it's just it's just super corrupt man the world is changing all the time i believe honestly that i can talk i believe that i have the ability to reason i have logic i have compassion i have understanding if we talk there's no problem exactly you think i want beef if you come up to me and say hey man how's your life going what you doing you know you know what's your plans for the future i don't care if you're gay straight bi i don't care what the color of your skin is i don't care what you believe in what your opinions are depending on what opinions they are you know if if you're fucking racist then i don't want you talking to me or anything like that or a sexist or a homophobic or anything like that i don't want to be in relation with you but anyways i don't care about you know the color of your skin or your sexual orientation or your sexual uh preferences uh because to me uh, you're a human just like me god created you and you're a human just like me so that's all i gotta say about that uh, i'll be friendly to you uh, as Tupac said right here, if you're not a threat to me, I'm not a threat to you, and you know, vice versa. It's just, you know, it's saying? just the but way it is. That's, and people that's the way I'm living. In the media, and that's how they come at me. And then you know, we got a clash. One of the things that you read in the media, just what I said angry. about the media. That you personify your generation. People assume too much. Some angry folks out there, and you're one of them. I'll put it to you: Are you angry? Are you angry with what you see society is about? Yeah, I'm. I'm yeah, I am too. No, I'm not gonna lie. I'm fucking, I'm fucking pissed at this generation, man. They're missing so much. I'm not trying to put myself as above all of them because you know I'm, I'm, I never want to do that. Everything is fucked up politically, um, fucking socially, everything, man. I'm, I'm everything. extremely angry, confused. You know, um, there's corruption everywhere. A lot of the times when I sat up in court, I couldn't defend myself. You know what I'm saying? And it was, it wasn't like. The things they were saying about me were beyond my comprehension or um, the things that I could say weren't going to help my case. But because, I mean, I was, it's like being exiled, you know, from, from society. And that's how I feel. And this whole um, the anger comes from I'm tired of waiting for my past to get to society. All I ever wanted to do was make um, me and everybody around me feel more comfortable about where we were. You know what I'm saying? About the places that we stay. Where we, this is our home base. Let's build it up. Let's be happy about where we come from. You know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to assimilate and um, get a pass key to where they at. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that everything needs to be separate, but we got to find pride in ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and once you get the pride, like damn near two seconds after the pride comes anger from being held like that for so long and to be made to go through those changes, you get mad. You know what I'm saying? As soon as, I believe as soon as any black man receives his first three checks, he starts getting mad. Because it's not about the necessity of having to have a job and having to pay and having to do that. You don't care no more about the smiles and the, you know, yes, my son, because you didn't got paid. You know what I'm saying? And now it's like you want to save money. You want to help other people. When you see how, how far it is, how far you have to go to help anybody in your neighborhood. It's set up for me when I get paid for me to exit the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? The only reason I've had these problems is because I haven't left yet. And these problems don't come from a white man. And that's where your subconscious comes in. That's where, you know... That's why you have to be smart and all that because, you know, you just can't quit for no reason or quit because people are talking shit about you or quit because you're a long way from your goal. I'm a long way from my goals. A lot of people are talking shit about me and I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. I don't really care if it takes 10, 20 years. I I'm staying right here. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. It comes from just society, the problems that we have. Let me put this to you. A lot of people tell me. Yeah. Tupac is, for the most part, a nice guy. This old thug thing, hype. Mm -hmm. Good for record sales. Mm -hmm. uh, it helps him identify with the young people who are out there. Because people can relate to that more. Who would maybe label him a sellout like they did Hammer if he mm -hmm. didn't have that hard mm -hmm. side. What about that? First of all, nobody could call me a sellout. 
I'm not, I'm not going for that. I'm not even in that. I'm not, I'm not looking for approval from the black community because we don't give approval. You know, we don't really do nothing but exist. So it's not like I'm, black people can tell me, you a sellout or you true blue, you know what I'm saying? It's not that, I'm not even caught up in that. But, um. Yo, y'all see me like nodding to what he's saying, uh, and I'm not even black, but I get most of what he's saying because I'm Puerto Rican. And a lot of like the Puerto Rican hood and all that shit, um, really, it's, it's really basically much the same. Just, you know, speaking different languages is basically all that. But I know, I know I can relate to a lot of things he's talking about because, you know, pride, when it comes to pride, um, you know, just being who you are in the hood, you gotta, you gotta put up a character and, you know, you just can't help but become that character once, once you, once, once you've been him for a long time. I don't know if you guys get me, but that's just, that's just how I feel. And you guys can sometimes hear me talking in an accent and sometimes not talking in an accent, like sometimes I got this high-pitched uh, ghetto accent and, and then I sound like a fucking American white kid but it's just how I was brought up you know there's no there's no in between there's sometimes it, it goes this side sometimes it goes that side the way I act too sometimes I act fucking cringe sometimes I act fucking great sometimes I act myself I change I flip flop always but I mostly try to act to act like myself so yeah. I can see that you know what I'm saying the one thing we do have in common as black people is we share that poverty so the thug side is more closer to the poverty than me being rich you know how can I come to any community center you know what I'm saying, sporting a, a Rolex presidential, all these diamonds, and be like, look, we, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> gotta, gotta. <laughs> but now, when I say we, they know what I mean. I'm not saying, like, yeah. I live in this neighborhood, and but I'm a thug, and they thugs. They can relate to it. I don't even have to say that. You know what I'm saying? When I come, I don't have to say I'm real. They already know that. You know what I'm saying? From, from me, from me being me. From not pushing the thugness, but I know from the business that everybody in this business is always whispering in your ear about what you can't say, what you can't do, what you can't wear. In this world, and in this world, it's two worlds, a white world and a black world. All I did was stand in the middle, you know what I'm saying, and, and say I'm living in these, I'm living in both worlds. I, I can go to the streets and survive, and I can go out here and do my business out here. I'm play devil's advocate again. Critics say... Yo, yeah, and that's, a, that's a very great position you got there, Tupac. Excellent position, god damn. That, this man, hmm, this man, huh. You're being pimped. You're being pimped by the... Also, yeah, about the realness and everything, uh, a lot of people can tell you once they know me, they know I'm real. There isn't anything mainly fake about me. Uh, I try to keep realness 100% with you. I'm super honest. I don't hold anything back. Uh, I don't watch other people's feelings that much, but, you know, I'm always supportive and all that stuff. This video has shown about me, uh, like, like expressing myself in some ways i'm i'm not fucking sure what this turned into anyway stop record, pausing lee i'm telling exactly you it's been a long time since i recorded allow you to do your thug the out. because it portrays a certain black i mean you've heard it yeah that if you were just a singer you wouldn't have the same record contracts you had right. but because you portray the thug life the gangster rap they've allowed you to make that money they've allowed you to push and make your play i beg to differ you know what i'm saying I'm getting pimped, that's true. But um, just like how a, how a woman would be, you know what I'm saying? Anybody would be pimped, you know? It's like, it's not that you get pimped, it's how long you get pimped, you know what I'm saying? Because if you really look at this situation, it is not I who's being pimped. When you look at the white kids with Raiders hats on, it's the white folks getting pimped, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm making their future. I'm writing down their curriculum. Right now, what I write in my album today, when it comes out in two months, that's what white kids is doing. So who really is getting pimped? I'll be, I'll be, I'll, what I'm mm. writing in my raps is what the white kids is gonna be saying to their mamas and daddies when they come home. Who is getting pimped? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a high school dropout. You know? <laughs> I cannot. Oh my god. That. <laughs> Cause I. Oh wow, wow. Cause he literally spit 100% truth. Cause you know, when them kids be listening to the Lil Pump and Six Nine songs. You know they'd be going to their mamas and daddies saying, Dad, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be a fucking a rapper who smokes weed every day and makes millions. And just being so fucking ignorant, man. You know I'm saying, as wow. far as my teacher told me, this man predicted the future. Be, you know what I'm saying? I just got to. It's going down. You know what I'm saying? It's going down. <laughs> you know, everybody's getting pimped. Whether you work a nine to five or whether you work for yourself, you get pimped. Can this guy smile? Not, can the man interview the smile? The crime is how long you allow yourself to get pimped. You have to come up. Everything is a come up. Everything is a struggle. You start from the bottom, working to the top. 
I asked Shakur about his feelings on people like New York Minister Calvin Butts and the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Mm. That was great, man. That was good. Yeah, that was good. Anyways, this is going to be the end for part one for right now. Uh, I'm going to be posting part two soon, so look forward to that. If you enjoyed this and if you want to see part two soon, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share with all your friends. Click that button so you miss an upload. Recommend your interviews and songs down in the comments below. I will see you in the next one. Tupac is a ghost.